This is the problem with internet discourse, or really just like any form of speech writing, honestly, that doesn't have a controlled audience. Uh, on Twitter, discourse is impossible because you can't express yourself via tweets, and also the internet, the mechanical and emotional pulleys motivating people to argue via back and forth quote tweeting, not in earnest attempts to engage with each other on the merits of their arguments, but simply to maximize their own follower base's likelihood to provide their side the majority of likes and support and to maximize their enemy tweets ratios. Uh, also, as with all social media platforms, including YouTube, you can't have a conversation with 20 different people at once that are all saying different things and that are all pissed as fuck. YouTube is better, but it's still not an effective for Matt, for back and forth discourse. Like, I, I am being fucking stupid for even doing this video as a follow up to my previous video, which has gotten like 80 times more viewership than the majority of my content ever gets, which can only mean bad things because it probably means that the algorithm that is responsible for the my view video's viewership has determined it to be confrontational enough to spread around to people who will uh, get pissed off by seeing it or watching it. So I'm left with a conundrum. Uh, I make a video, it gets way more attention, especially hostile attention, than I intended. However, I want the video to encourage discourse. I honestly don't mind hostility in the long run if it's in the service of discourse of some level of quality. Like real discourse, as in two people listening to each other, acknowledging the arguments and, 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 and moving forwards in a discussion on some topic. And not like back and forth trolling or shouting that isn't going anywhere or just going off topic. Realistically, the people who dislike my current video, 95% of them will never be interested in a constructive discourse, uh, even in the uncredi already incredibly unlikely event that they even watch this follow-up. The other 5%, I appreciate. I honestly do. You can call me a retard, pig fucker, whatever. I don't mind, really. At the end of the day, if there is a real discussion with real points being made, um, I still appreciate that. I, I do. I think that's, uh... I am from the fucking Forge from the Twitter era. I mean, I have legitimately made friends with people that started off in, like... In, like, fucking insult matches on Twitter that we were arguing over some bullshit or something. But, you know. I don't think rudeness necessarily is a detractor of arguments, you know. So as long as someone is still making legitimate points, I will still make legitimate points in kind. My conundrum is that it's cringe as fuck to do what I'm doing now and make a fucking follow-up video in response to people yelling at me for a prior argumentative video, like a fucking Twitter back and forth, but somehow even lamer, because making videos requires some slight, tiny little modicum of effort at least. But the point of my video was that we need to have more healthy discourse in the FGC. So this is me being fucking lame for the sake of discourse. Here is some discourse. The video I made has three major points. Discourse in the FGC is stifled because people are too comfortable in their set talking points. People are too quick to jump on dog piles on random people, and that there's a, a culture in the FGC of seeking out more people or the next person to mock as a scrub. And the FGC has a largely infantile comprehension of opinion, a largely underdeveloped comprehension of opinion, back and forth. Reasons why people are angry at- which is also just the internet in general, but there are sections of the internet where people have a better- have a more sophisticated comprehension of opinion. I'm just saying this is not one of them. Reasons why people are angry at that video, in my understanding, uh, up for the people who were. One, my tone of voice and word choice 
way too hostile. Way too hostile. Even if people agree with the fundamental message, like my fundamental message of, hey, maybe think before you dogpile on some random guy for saying something banal. If they interpret themselves in any way to be part of the collective that I am vaguely criticizing, which I should mention does in includes me as well, uh, I am also guilty of all the things that Twitter encourages, like the dogpiling and the reactionary bullshit and stuff. I do that as well, I do that all the time, so I didn't mean to suggest that there's like only specific people that I think are at fault or doing things wrong. But anyways, given my hostile rhetoric, people ascribe it as an attack and feel emotionally compelled to attack back. And this is not me, like, fucking Reddit armchair psych psychologizing this shit. It's, this is my own fault for the tone of the video. My biggest problem with making quick videos that I just pump out in, like, an hour or two is that, like, I spend so much fucking time on Twitter and I have spent so much time on Twitter, my default is to talk like I'm on Twitter. As in, be callously rude and completely disregarding of, like, social etiquette because nothing I say matters, because one, Twitter isn't a place for real conversations, and 90% of people on Twitter will tell me to go fuck myself at the drop of a hat. I might as well do the same for the same cathartic dopamine reason that they do it. Which doesn't work as well for YouTube or anything else where having an aggressive tone gen may generate some attention, but it will never be good at fostering good faith dialogue in large part. I mean, even the people that were fucking agreeing with me in the comments of my video, I still don't appreciate. Because they're kind of... They're a little too, uh... Hostile reading. Uh, to the indicative. But anyways, I also, like most people on the internet, tend to exaggerate my own personality to ensure that I am expressing myself, and like every fucking person does has some their own internet persona, their caricature of themselves, which means that when I'm making a video, I find myself, maybe not intentionally, but I find myself going out of my way to sound more aggressive in the parts where I am coding aggressive to communicate my personality and my tone in some fucking roundabout way of thinking that people would interpret it as a characteristic of personality, like a fucking character in a TV show who is written to be aggressive so the audience recognizes their traits and passions, and not just any random asshole being a dumb random asshole. This theory only makes sense with an established audience. Like, for example, in fact, the video I posted, the latter half, is the very thing that I am stupidly envisioning, which is clips of Digi and Jesse exaggeratingly being exaggeratedly aggressive for comedy and entertainment value of the amuse how amusing it is to see them be drunk and being over the top and letting loose and such, which is not a which one is not a comedic tone that I am skilled at capturing, nor does it work in a, a, uh, an argumentative type of video where the purpose is to make a genuine criticism of something, nor does it ever work for an outside audience. Two second problem referring to say jam uh, explicitly. Although, I did also mention Infilament by name, and not a fucking soul stood up to defend that guy, which does make me chuckle, but... Anyways, I'll explain what I meant by this in a second, but my this is mine own fault for two reasons. A, there's an ironic problem here where if I don't use a specific example of something that I am criticizing, people will not have a, a clear image in their head of what I'm actually criticizing. I, if I don't have a specific example, I can only talk in generalizations and a certain level of vagueness. So if I lack explicits, I'm vaguely describing things, and people are psychologically more likely to assume that they, or something that they might support, might be within a range of interpretation to match up with my vague descriptions. However, if I do use specific examples, well, okay, two, like, potential problems for that. One, if I were a large channel, which I am not, but if I were, I would be doing the very thing that I am criticizing in that video, which is pointing to someone and leaving a window open for my followers to harass and insult that person. 
but for someone like me with a small channel, I risk more of what happened here, which is making an enemy of the thing that I am explicitly referring to. And B, and I know this is a fucking stupidly structured because I'm on my fucking alphabetical list of reasons for why it was stupid of me to mention Seijam by name within my already numbered list of conflict points within my original video, but whatever. B, I just mentioned Seijam out of sheer laziness to do more research to find explicitly clear examples of bad behavior to put on screen and observe. Just laziness out of my half acidness of my video. I referred to Seijam in an insulting way, which is just purely incorrect. Uncalled for, not fucking accurate, not good, not what I. As, while he does fit, he does fit within my overall critique, and I will try to explain why better. He's not like an asshole or anything, he just represents the thing that I was trying to talk about, so it's completely uncalled for to, uh, be rude about it. Some people misheard slash misinterpreted my other explicit statements. I did mention scrub quotes by name, but I didn't and wasn't criticizing scrub quotes. In the video, at least, I wasn't. I cited scrub quotes as an example of how there is a culture in the FGC of looking for scrubs to make fun of, right? Which is there, you know? And in scrub quotes, most of those guys are scrubs who are actually being douchebags, and like, yeah, they're they're stupid and they're easy to make fun of, right? But the, my point is that that's a culture that exists in this community, which is unique to it in a way that, like, you won't go on film Twitter and find people fucking well, I, I don't know, maybe there's some niche accounts you could, but there's not a scrub quotes type thing to look for people to make fun of in a lot of other communities. I said in my video that there are tons of scrubs, alright? There are. There absolutely are. There are tons of fucking scrubs. There are scrubs as in assholes, idiots, whatever. I didn't say there aren't scrubs, you know? I, I didn't say that anyone who gets called a scrub is like an innocent bystander. There are tons of scrubs who do and say douchey things. I just meant that there is a strong anti-scrub culture. And sometimes that culture bleeds over into harassing people who don't deserve it. And is part of this larger culture of assuming that rhetoric outside of the accepted ideas of the FGC's meta that anyone from outside of that must be a scrub. Now, if we were going to get into it, I don't love scrub quotes. I do think that, like, maybe 15% of the time or more, the people who are highlighted by scrub quotes don't even, don't really deserve to be mocked by a huge group of people. Some of them are just people that, like, don't really know how to play the game or whatever. There are some people that are like, this guy's not being an asshole, why are you putting him on here? I generally don't like mass bullying. Even if the people are assholes, I still don't like mass bullying. I think that if you're, ar if you're already on Twitter, which is a place where you can find an asshole on every fucking corner, I think that if you're on Twitter, you can get into a fight with some stranger and you're like, fuck you, and the other guy's like, oh yeah, well fuck you. And that should be the end of it. You block him, he blocks you, whatever, or you just fucking ignore it. I think that that's just, like, normal Twitter, as, you know, unhealthy as probably that is. But I think it becomes unbalanced when it's, like, dozens and dozens or more of people all harassing one guy. Even if he was being a prick to someone which can be subjective and can be taken out of context, so you can't always be insured even if someone looks like they're being a prick. But anyways, I just feel like social media platforms give you the tools to deal with just two people being dicks to each other. Like, you can block one guy if he's being an asshole. There's not really many good defenses against a hundred guys who are being assholes. So, no, I don't really love scrub quotes. If they always did, like, anonymous people, there are some accounts that I follow that are designed around making fun of people, but they only post 
completely anonymous in ways that you can't track the the person who made the quote or whatever. I, I'm fine with that stuff. Three, misinterpretations. There are several responses I've gotten from uh, from people that think that I'm arguing on behalf of points that I did not argue and would not argue. So I'd like to clear up some of those. So, okay. Apologize. Apologies. Apo apologize to Sejam and Infilament, who no one defended, but... You know. <laughs> Who I used insulting language when describing, to the best of my knowledge, neither one of them are assholes. The problem with this topic, especially with Twitter, is you you can be an asshole to someone without meaning to. And that's a very large part of all of this. Case in point, that guy that I talked about in my video, the guy who talked about aggressive mechanics in fighting games, and then got like a thousand fucking quote tweets and replies. Most of the people in that situation, most of the people on, were not trying to be assholes. They were not trying to insult that guy. They were not whatever. They just see something on their feed. They see someone else quote tweet it, and then they see it, and then they go and quote tweet it, whatever. They see something, and then they state their own opinion. They're, they, they, just, they just see it, and then they, they say what they have to say about it. The problem is, 90% of Twitter where a whole discourse can be framed around a real person, a real account, at least, from one guy who probably doesn't find it very fun for his notifications on his account to be blasted for 48 hours with people talking about how wrong his opinion is. Now, most people, most, they are not explicitly insulting this guy. In my opinion, there is a level of disrespect to not even entertain his point of view, but Twitter is also not a place for nuanced or complex arguments in the first place, so that's, like, more far-fetched to expect people to really, you know, talk with him on the merits. The real problem comes from the attention that this one guy gets from getting quote-tweeted and boosted by every pundit with thousands of followers. The problem is just the sheer volume. These people, okay, by having 20 different people, let's say, 20 different people quote tweet this one guy, even if all 20 of those people had good intentions, they weren't trying to insult him, they're not trying to be rude about it, they're just saying, I disagree with what he's saying. They're boosting him to so many people across all of their followers of all 20 people that are quote tweeting this, and all the people that are going to then see that and quote tweet it themselves to boost to an even larger audience, some small percentage of the total audience of everyone who will eventually see this guy's original tweet and see it from the perspective of seeing all of these different people saying, all of them saying how wrong he is from this negative fucking perspective, some percentage of them of the people who see this will not have good intentions and will be rude, will reply, will quote tweet in a rude, shitty manner to this individual. I just do not believe there is any healthy way in boosting guys that have no audience to a huge fucking outsider audience, no matter the circumstances. I think that if you've been someone, if you have that experience, if you've been someone online with no audience, a very small audience, and you've experienced that yourself, having something that you say randomly get picked up by a bunch of people, and having all these total strangers who are all assuming this shit about you, saying all this shit about you, mostly negative, some extremely negative and rude, you'd know that it's not fucking pleasant, okay? It's not pleasant to have that be going on for hours and hours if you're just some guy. The other thing I take issue with is not respecting people's statements or opinions. Take my other video, not the one that I'm talking about, but the one I made, I, I made another video a few weeks ago, which is why I had Sejam on the brain, because that was an incident where I was explicitly criticizing Sejam directly for a video that he made. With more hostility than warranted again, I was, you know, needlessly aggressive, but I do believe that my criticisms were substantively valid. So, the case was, 
Speed Kicks makes a post about how he doesn't like it when he sees people say that they play better against strong players than they do against weak players, and he called it copium. Sayjam jumped onto this as well, probably some other people, I don't fucking remember, I don't know, but Sayjam jumps onto this on Twitter and then on YouTube, immediately makes a video about this very topic. And the video that he made basically says, if you say that you do better against strong players than you do against weak players, you don't know what you're talking about, and you probably only think that because strong players let you live longer during a match. Now really, this is just him posting an argument slash opinion that I think makes very little sense. It's just an opinion piece that I think is mediocre, but like, there's nothing wrong with him making an opinion piece even if I think it's mediocre, you know? The thing that I think is harmful to the overall FGC in this case is that this culture that there is no respect paid to the words of these theoretical players. In this case, He's not giving specific examples of real players who said these words, real players who said... But it's just like the, the vague idea of a player who says something like, I'm better against good players than I am against bad players. But still, I have tutored a decent number of players. I know players who have said things similar to this. I, the players I know, these are not random scrubs that are just huffing copium because they lost to some YOLO Ken player and they delusionally think that they could beat Tokido in a fucking first to two, okay? That's not who these people are. I have spoken to real, serious players training to improve trying to think critically about their play, about their improvement, about their psychology, whatever, who have made the abstract observation that they perform better against good players. The thing that I dislike in Sayjam's video and in the discourse surrounding that whole thing is this is a microcosm for how many FGC heads treat many such discussions. They all instantly assume that the random player must, must have no idea what he's talking about. They have so little respect for it, so little, not even a fucking ounce of respect for it, they don't even bother to entertain whether the player might have a legitimate argument or a legitimate point of view. They instantly jump to, okay, you're clearly a scrub huffing copium, let me make up some reasons for why you delusionally think the thing that you're saying. This is a perfect example. It stifles dialogue because rather than someone having a serious conversation with a person who says something like they do well against good players and poorly against bad players, right, rather than have a dialogue about it and try to deduce what's really going on and treat them as a fucking human being with a legitimate point of view and engage with them in good faith, they just make content in bad faith to explain why anyone who would say such a thing is just wrong and dumb. It's passive-aggressively condescending to some collection of people, and it is anti-dialogue because it assumes that no one could offer a legitimate argument to support their claim, so they're not even worth talking to. This specific example is also annoying to me because it's just a bad argument. Now again, bad arguments are fine, they aren't like an injustice or an offense or an evil or something, but that's just why I felt and feel more negatively towards this specific example. The explanation that Sayjam gives in his video is a complete fiction. He says that players who say they do better against good players only think that because they survive longer in a round because good players are more careful and thus play more reactively and slowly. This is a theory that he's positing based on zero evidence, zero real players who have ever had this lived experience, no case studies, no evidence, nothing. I guarantee he has never talked to a real player who has said something like this. 
and then determine that the player was tricked by the round timer after observing what is going on in their psychology. He very clearly just made up something that he thought sounded kind of reasonable to him in his head and used that as a video for why these people don't know what they're talking about. Now, as someone who has tutored players on different levels, a more reasonable explanation for why a player would think something like, I do worse against bad players than I do against good players, is because a number of potential reasons. They get flustered and ex at extremely aggressive play, they are too stubborn when dealing with gimmicks and that are repeatedly forced upon them and don't adapt fast enough when the same thing is thrust upon them over and over. They don't know how to set the pace of a match, but they have a vague idea of how to respond to certain actions so they can perform better against a player that sets the pace for them, but if they're in a situation where they have to create the pace, they have to create the opening, they're playing a player who makes weird decisions, weird off-meta decisions that they don't understand, that they can't read, that they can't get the vibe of, they feel lost, and are more likely to lose a grip on their game plan and crumble psychologically and be awkward and uncomfortable. This is even a phenomenon in sports, like tennis. Newer players that haven't learned how to do everything yet, because there's lots of different skills in any sport and anything you have to learn. You can learn how to do one skill really good and be complete ass at another skill that you haven't learned very well yet. Players that have learned how to do some things decently, but not everything. There is a phenomenon where, in tennis, players can return shots fairly well at their opponent's pace, even opponents that are more experienced and better than them. But they struggle to change the pace to their benefit when given an opportunity, a case in which they can be more easily defeated by slower shots rather than more serious fast shots, because they understand and can moderately execute uh, returning a ball at the same pace which doesn't require any additional exertion, versus taking a slow shot and turning it into a fast shot, which requires more accuracy and specific motion. In Say Jam's video, he explains his theory based on the difference between fighting, say, a gold-ranked Ken and fucking Daigo Umahara. This again shows the misunderstanding and the lack of basic respect to even ask these players what they mean. Most players who say, I do worse against bad players, one, they're not wrong. The first misunderstanding is that it's a matter of winning or losing. They play worse in that they perform worse. They react slower. They make more mistakes. They miss chances. They have a worse pace. They have a worse overall approach to the match. It's not that they lose more often to bad players, quote-unquote, whatever bad means, if it means lower ranked, if it means people who play in, like, an obnoxious way, uh, in their opinion, whatever. And it's not that they lose to bad players, but they win against good players. It's that their own abilities drastically decrease when they are uncomfortable. And all it takes is to look at their replays to see this in action. They will play against some guy who's playing weirdly, and they will are visibly shook. They miss things they don't normally miss. They are clearly flustered in the face of maybe some trolly player, or some gimmick that they aren't used to being forced upon them over and over. These are not players who lose to weak players, but think that they could take on Daigo. You would know that! if you just fucking talk to them instead of assuming that they're a scrub and talking about them passive-aggressively and, and just acting like they're some primitive life form incapable of communicating on your level and think, wow, that person clearly has no clue what he's saying. I won't talk to him. Let me make up a fake reason for why he's obviously wrong and stupid. So no, it's not trying to be rude. Say Jim is not trying to be rude. He's not trying to be an asshole. In his mind, he's trying to be educational. But these are instances where the impulse to assume that everyone is a scrub and try to fucking mansplain to them why they don't know what they're saying and why they're not even worth listening to and having their words be taken seriously, I think it's bad for the community. 
I don't think it's anyone's fault, per se. I don't think it's Sagem's fault or any fucking individual's fault. I just think it's a trend, it's a habit, and it's overall bad for the community. Now, these are just people who, at the end of the day, are just voicing their opinions. No different from what I am doing right now, and ultimately, this is simply my opinion. It is my opinion that dogpiling on people with no following is immoral in most circumstances. It's my opinion that people are too quick to assume others are scrubs and to write off their words as the ramblings of the misguided. It's my opinion that there is a culture in some percentage of the FGC who are actively seeking out more people to call scrubs and make fun of, which can lead to a lot of negative interactions where people just trying to do something or say something earnestly will get attacked and insulted. It is my opinion that people in the FGC do not know how to respect other people's opinions. Now this is a point where I lose some people because, again, when people don't understand opinions, they don't get this concept very well, but there's no way around it. As expected, you know, there's people like, oh, how can you complain about their opinions if it's just your opinion to complain about them? Yes, we are all just voicing our opinions. Even the people who think that their opinions are facts. At the end of the day, they are also only just expressing the opinion that they think their opinions are facts or can be facts. Everything anyone says is an opinion. The pointless thing to do is say, okay, well, then you can't ever criticize anyone's opinion. Otherwise, you're being a hypocrite because you have opinions. I don't think this should be a difficult concept to understand. Me saying, I don't think your opinion is good, isn't some reality-bending skip that reaches a fact. As opinions are, you know, opinions, things people believe in. I simply believe that my opinion makes more sense than theirs does. This is the entire reason I put all those Digi Jesse SAO2 clips in my video. Because yeah, they made an SAO2 review, and sure, some people can say, and are allowed to say, what's the point of this video? What's the point of making a review, Lamal? As a comment, they can comment that, and sure, they're allowed to, but I think most people would agree that it is fucking stupid to say that. You can have the opinion that other people shouldn't be allowed to voice their opinions, and I can believe that you're a fucking moron for that opinion. I'm simply arguing that some arguments are... most people would recognize as stupid, and that some are just fundamentally unproductive. If someone says, I don't like SF6, and then someone else says, okay, if you don't like the game, just don't play it. Why complain? Stop complaining. I am explaining that that latter opinion is stupid and unproductive. It's blatant hypocrisy since it's someone voicing their own opinion while saying that someone else should not voice their opinion. It's not them saying they shouldn't have the opinion. It's not them saying you're wrong, SF6 isn't bad, it's good. It's not them saying that they shouldn't have their opinion or that their opinion is wrong. It is literally saying you should not voice your opinion, even though they are literally voicing their opinion right now. It's not a disagreement on merits, it's just blatant hypocrisy. I am not saying that these people shouldn't voice their opinions, I'm just saying their opinions are fucking stupid. Also, it's stupid. J just stupid. Okay, yes. Calling something stupid is also subjective and is an opinion, but I think most reasonable people would agree that it is stupid to argue against the concept of being able to voice your opinion or expressing a r making a review of a video game. Also, it accomplishes nothing. It is not a disagreement that will lead to anything. It's not a disagreement where people can argue about the merits of their two opposing sides and learn more about each other and themselves and come to some agreement. It's not about the substance of the matter. If we pull back the curtain, just be honest, if we just be honest with ourselves, the person who says that type of thing, what they're actually upset about is the fact that they saw an opinion shitting on SF6. Okay, they're upset because someone doesn't like the game that they like. But 
Rather than them arguing that SF6 is good instead of bad, which is what they actually do believe, instead, they do some bank shot like, oh, well, why do you even play the game if you don't like it? Why are you fucking complaining about it? Why are you fucking complaining? Just don't play it. Which is just a way for them to argue why they shouldn't have to see other people's opinions. And that's dishonest because they don't actually believe that. They don't really believe that people who dislike games should just not play them and not talk about them. They don't believe that. They most likely play games themselves that they don't like, and they will complain about those games that they don't like on Twitter. Most likely. Most people do. They are saying something hypocritical that they do not follow, that they don't believe in. It is intellectually dishonest because the thing that they actually believe, that Street Fighter VI is good and not bad, is not the thing they're actually making the argument for, and thus there's no potential for dialogue between these two opposing opinions, because one of them is based on completely false pretenses. Same thing with the, like, I saw one guy complaining that I said people making false equivalencies was not. Them claiming that all fighting games are 100% identical, and that, and that, uh, that... I, I know that they don't say that, and I know that if you... The point is that if you asked someone if they think all fighting games are 100% identical, they would say, no, they're not. I was just in illustrating the logical flaw that they're... That the logical flaw and the natural conclusion of what they're doing, which is jumping to false equivalencies. It's far from just, like, the recent conversation around neutral skips and drive rush. Anytime anyone points out something or makes any claim about how a fighting game is in a way that some people might interpret as a criticism, even if it isn't one, there will always be some people making false equivalencies. Take throw loops in SF6. I remember the same thing happening w w when people were talking about that. Players, including pro players, a lot of pro players were complaining about throw loops in SF6 and they were saying that they were boring and unfun and whatever else. And then some section of other people were like, oh yeah, well, uh, other games have had throw loops too. Checkmate. This is once again dishonest. It is dishonest to compare two different things and act like act like there's no meaningful difference and that people are incorrect for saying that there's a difference because they share some similarity. Every game is different. Throw loops in one game can be very different from another game. The damage, the defensive options, the risk reward, the details. The details of the situation, they all contribute to the two games being different. Two games can have corner throw loops, and one can be way, 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 way more fucking oppressive than the other one. It is dishonest to compare things based on these vague overarching concepts with no regard for the details and the statistics. At that point, you might as well say that all games are 100% identical if you say that one is no different from another based on such vague, inaccurate reasoning. Because the original statement was, this game is different from another game, and they're saying no it isn't while using this bullshit false equivalency. They are claiming the games are the same even though they aren't. This is another case where the arguments being made are both stupid and reductive. They are stupid for comparing apples to oranges and ignoring the very different situations formed by the overall collaboration of all the details that form the specifics of one game to another, and they are reductive in that it's just an unproductive thing to say. It stifles conversation if every time someone says anything, if someone says, this thing in a fighting game is like this, or, oh, let's let's take, just take a criticism to simplify it. Let's say someone says, this thing in this fighting game is too oppressive, and someone else says, oh yeah, well, something sort of similar has existed before in other fighting games, so you're wrong and shut up. That is yet another example of people shutting down the conversation by using dishonest reasoning. There is very little actual critical analysis of these sorts of things. When that guy on Twitter said that, oh, Drive Rush and Wild Assault and Dash Jab are all examples of 
a new trend of aggressive mechanics in fighting games, there wasn't a single fucking person who took that seriously. There was not a single person who said, you know what? Why don't we actually analyze this? Why don't we actually study the details of how these things work in their games and how their, these mechanics exist in the cacophony of details and the situations that it creates and critically compare them to each other and to other games that have existed in the past to figure out what are the similarities and what are the differences. No one said anything like that. Not one person thought that it was actually worth even thinking about. It was just a hundred different people all saying the same thing. All saying, you're wrong, neutral skips have always existed, these games are no different from the old games, shut up. And that was the dialogue, quote-unquote, that occurred. Why did this happen? Because people are primed to see any observation as a criticism, and to see criticisms as the misguided thoughts of scrubs who are just upset at something, uh, that has always been around in order to avoid seeing their own shortcomings as a competitor because the FGC's social norms only involve approaching every fighting game with the same rationales and rhetoric and ideas. So, I don't like that. I would rather see a fucking video that actually analyzes all these different quote-unquote neutral skips and the technical differences between them, and how they're similar and how they're different. I would love to see an analysis of that across multiple games, but that's not what we get, okay? So it is my opinion that these habits and instinctive ways of thinking and reacting have the effect of stifling healthy dialogue in the FGC, and in some cases, either explicitly or passive-aggressively, result in harassment towards smaller players. Either individual players that are getting made fun of, and bombarded with fucking notifications and, and interactions, or players that are called out via bad faith generalizations. And again, I am not trying to blame anyone. These are social constructs, not the actions of individual bad actors in most cases. These are psychological traps. I'm just saying, maybe we could go out of our way to do better in these areas. That's about it. See ya.